Jane Austen's works have become inextricably linked to the fashions of the Regency era, a time when clothing, architecture, and art reflected a transformative period of British history. Although the Regency has come to refer more generally to the late 18th and early 19th centuries, it formally began in 1811 with the reign of the Prince Regent. It ended nine years later, when George IV officially became King of England. This period coincided with the publication of Jane Austen's novels. However, several of her works, like Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, and Northanger Abbey, were originally written in the late 1790s. During this time, social and political unrest had a profound impact on French fashion, thereby influencing British clothing styles as well. Even before the French Revolution, fashion was trending toward emphasizing the natural figure. The Regency era is most often associated with the Empire Silhouette, named for the first French Empire under Napoleon. Fashion increasingly emulated the garments of antiquity, as society looked to the ideals of ancient Greece and Rome. Archaeological findings in Greece, Rome, and Pompeii also sparked renewed interest in the Greco-Roman world. The neoclassical aesthetic was especially evident in women's fashion, as light-colored gowns with lower necklines, short sleeves, and high waistlines gained popularity. The style was often worn in white, which also denoted a high social status. Early 19th century corsets were designed to provide a columnar shape to the body. The success of the British East India Company prompted the export of large amounts of cotton to British textile manufacturers. By the end of the century, printed cotton and fine muslin were newly fashionable fabrics of choice. Men's fashion also moved away from ornate clothing toward the conservative, tailored style that would set the tone for the rest of the century. Especially noteworthy during this time period were intricately tied white neckcloths paired with white linen shirts and tight-fitting pantaloons. Due to ongoing conflict, however, contact between England and France diminished at the beginning of the 19th century resulting in the Regency style taking on a distinctly English flair. Military influences are apparent in Regency fashion as well. Clothing became a bit more structured, including different types of outerwear for women. At the beginning of the 1800s, ready-made cloaks were available to purchase throughout England. These bright red cardinals became especially ubiquitous in the countryside. Regency servants dressed in the styles of the time that were suitable to their social class. The majority of domestic servants were employed in modest establishments or in small households. Those on larger estates might be provided with uniforms, but typically servants wore normal clothing and durable printed or plain fabrics. Accessories like aprons, handkerchiefs, and sleeve covers were used to protect clothing. After the Treaty of Paris in 1814, the Regency style again reflected changes in French fashion, moving away from the neoclassical style. Women's dresses featured ruffles on sleeves, hems, and necklines, as well as fuller skirts. Waistlines varied widely, and by the 1820s, fashion plates showed the ideal silhouette to consist of broad shoulders and a narrow waist. Although the outfits depicted in these 19th century fashion plates were often adapted and toned down, they give us a glimpse of what high society was wearing throughout London and Paris. During the Regency era, clothing had political and international implications. Over the span of three decades, fashion had shifted from ornamented and opulent to minimalist simplicity and back again to showy and decorative. However, Regency fashions in various forms and interpretations continue to be worn today, largely due to Jane Austen and her timeless novels. <laughs>